Neural network predictions can assist physicians in reading chest x-rays or performing large-scale retrospective studies. However, neural networks are not perfect. A major issue impacting their use in healthcare is the false positive prediction problem. This is when a model makes an incorrect prediction, but the user feels like they should trust the AI. Let's look at an example. Here, we have a model that takes a chest x-ray and predicts if the patient has a mass present. A mass may indicate a tumor and is generally defined by a light-colored region where there shouldn't be one. How confident are you in these predictions from the model? You might be inclined to trust the predictions more when you think it can be right, but you have no reason to. Without interpretable methods, we really don't know what kind of logic is going on inside the network, and this can lead to negative outcomes for patients if we blindly trust these models. Models can fail for a variety of reasons. Let's look at some from the perspective of a chest x-ray pathology prediction. First, let's talk about out of distribution inputs. The data used to train and validate a model defines the input domain. Samples outside of this may cause unexpected predictions. These samples can act like adversarial examples and cause the model to make a positive prediction. Next, let's talk about incorrect feature attribution, where a model has learned some incorrect relationship between the feature and the target label. If there is a correlation between the hospital and the target label, it might be easier for the model to determine the hospital instead of learning a representation for a more difficult pathology. Also, when the pathology is not present, the model can be forced to guess and may use the hospital as a feature. Similar correlations can exist for the acquisition parameters or even between pathologies themselves. We can see examples of dataset specific correlation by looking at average images from the NIH and the PADCHES dataset. Also, within a single dataset, we can see how the acquisition projection can be seen as well. Here, it is very likely that patients that cannot stand up for a PA typically have more pathologies present. Here, we see correlation between labels in public datasets. So how to address this false positive prediction problem in light of these issues? We believe the approach is to move towards a symbiosis of physician and AI. Models convey their predictions graphically, perhaps as a counterfactual, and physicians use their knowledge to interpret them. If physicians can see the features being used clearly, then they can determine for themselves if the model is correct or not. Also, there are benefits here in med medical education. A common approach for this is saliency maps, which are marketed to explain the prediction, but are only a first order approximation of the neural network. These have been instrumental in understanding predictions so far, but there is work showing that these methods often value appearance over accuracy or can generate arbitrary heat maps. Also, what's the deal with how often we ignore these spurious attributions and simply apply Gaussian blur to cover them up? So we think that counterfactual explanations are the answer to better identify erroneous predictions. Let's take a look at an example prediction and try to use different methods to verify if it is correct. The model predicts 80% that the patient has a mass. The traditional image gradient highlights an area next to the esophagus. In the counterfactual animation, we see that the mass is clearly highlighted. And the ground truth label is true for a mass. We can be confident about this prediction. Let's take a look at another positive prediction of mass. When we generate the counterfactual, it is unclear where the mass is. Maybe the network is confused. The ground truth label for this image is false for mass. Using this counterfactual animation, we are able to gain a much better understanding of why the model made its prediction, which allowed us to doubt it more. However, generating counterfactuals is very difficult, as existing methods are hard to implement. They often require GANs, which can be very difficult to train, or they are monolithic and require joint training with the classifier. Our approach aims to address both of these issues. Focus of this work is to create the most simple counterfactual generation method so that it is easy to implement across domains. We wanted a solution that does not require GANs, so we used the vanilla autoencoder with a basic reconstruction loss. We then compute a simple gradient update using the trained decoder 
and any classifier, which we call the latent shift method. Once we have a pre-trained autoencoder and classifier, we can use the latent shift approach to generate a counterfactual. Note that the autoencoder and classifier are trained without any special considerations for this method. Because of this, we also don't need access to the data they were trained on. One thing to keep in mind is that we want the exact opposite of an adversarial attack, but we are using the same idea. We want to perturb the input image so that the classifier reduces its prediction. If we just compute dfdx and move the pixels directly, then we will get an imperceivable difference, just like an adversarial attack. U using a decoder, we can regularize the transformation so that it will only yield valid images, hopefully. To make this work, the encoder takes an input image and encodes it in a latent representation Z. Then we use the decoder to reconstruct the image and feed this image into the classifier. We then compute the grading of the output of the classifier with respect to the latent space. Moving Z around in the latent space hopefully will cause feasible images to be reconstructed and the gradient we computed defines a direction to walk in. We can then apply a transformation to the latent representation by subtracting the gradient by some lambda and reconstruct the image to generate the counterfactual. When we move in the latent space, we can run the classifier on the reconstructed images to see how much we have changed the classifier's prediction. We found that if we change the prediction by negative 30%, the images come out pretty good. So we run an iterative search along the vector defined by the gradient in the latent space until we've reduced the prediction by 30%. Also note here that the classifiers we are using were calibrated so that 0.5 is the approximate decision boundary so this helps this method work well. From this sequence, we can construct a 2D image, which is similar to the traditional attribution map by taking the maximum pixel-wise difference between every image and the unperturbed reconstruction. There are some other approaches for this, but the ones we tried all work about the same. The autoencoder used in this work was a large ResNet with a basic elastic reconstruction loss. We found that large bottlenecks didn't work well, but had very crisp reconstructions. Their interpolations didn't appear consistent with a good representation of pathologies. A smaller bottleneck caused blurry reconstructions, but the representation appeared to capture the pathologies better. Evaluating how well this method captures pathologies is a bit difficult for a variety of reasons. For many pathologies, there are expert bounding boxes and segmentations available. Here. An example shows the intersection over union computed between the 2D attribution maps and a bounding box for, the, for an enlarged heart, which just highlights the heart. We can see that although the latent shift approach looks better in how it highlights around the heart, they have about the same IOU. We potentially need to rethink what annotations to collect in order to evaluate counterfactuals. A bounding box or binary segmentation may not correctly capture what we expect to change in counterfactuals. For example, here, we don't expect the entire heart to be removed. Here is a subset of the experiments we performed. Here we see multiple explanation methods applied to two different models. Overall, IOU is low, while AOC scores are relatively high. We can see that the most extreme case of this is with pneumothorax. A radiologist on the team noted that low pneumothorax performance makes sense because the resolution of the images we used was only 224 by 224, which does not show enough detail to see the small signatures of a collapsed lung. However, this is worrying that it achieved an AUC of almost 80%. In order to validate if this approach can help spot false positive predictions, we asked two radiologists to evaluate how confident they were in a model's prediction. 240 chest x-rays were selected from the NIH dataset where the models predicted positive for a pathology. 50% were selected as false positive predictions. For each image, they viewed the prediction in two ways, shown here in the colored boxes. Traditional methods include image gradient, guided backprop, and integrated gradients. The latent shift counterfactual includes an animation as well as the 2D version. 
The order they were shown the images was randomized, and a cooling off period of week was used so they could not remember the images they'd seen before. Six pathologies were evaluated and a histogram of results for each is shown here. We would like to see that for true positives, the results are all five, and for false positives, they are all one. What we observe, however, is that many false positives still cause high confidence in the model predictions, but not as much as the true positives. Between these two methods, we find that true positives for the latent shift counterfactuals show a significant in increase in confidence, which is good. For false positives, we find an increase in confidence, but it is not significantly different. So these results are not amazing, but they demonstrate that explainable AI methods can have an impact on the user confidence of a model. To recap, the latent shift approach works pretty well qualitatively. Autoencoders get the job done. IOU analysis may not be the best fit here, at least with the annotations we have. And we find a significant improvement in prediction confidence for true positive predictions. Thanks for watching this talk. All experimental source code is available and the models used are provided in the Chorchex Revision Library. At this co collab link, you can find a working demo of this method where you can input your own images.